What is a supernatural event that happened in your life that just cannot be explained? Jack said. Early into my now wife and I's relationship I had a dream about her in childbirth. Very vivid, and long. Like I spent days in the hospital with her and everything was in a strange twilight. When it came time to deliver things went very wrong and she and baby ended up passing away. I woke up quite shook naturally but brushed it off. I am a nurse and have had to deal with traumatic OB situations before, and I chalked it up to me dealing with that stress through a dream. Six years later and my wife is pregnant, I have forgotten the dream by now. I get a call late into the third trimester while I am on shift. Wife is going to the ER for a bad BP. I get off my shift and go to meet her. As soon as I step into the room I remember my dream. It's the same damn room. Which is extra spooky because the hospital we were at wasn't even built when I had a dream. This is last year right when lockdown started. My wife has admitted they want to wait a week to deliver if possible. She will be kept in a twilight state until that time. So it's me in this room eerily isolated as the world around us is frozen and my wife is incoherent mere feet away. Lingering for days in this room I brushed off my dream, trying to manage my anxiety and stress. Jack said. Come showtime my wife gets ready to begin pushing and it's exactly the same scenario as my dream. Things start going poorly, but the doctor thinks delivery is still possible, but at this point I finally freak out into full panic and demand a c-section for my wife. The DR I can tell wants to argue but I think my outburst made her step back and reassess the situation and she made the call for emergency c-section. Took 10 minutes for me to get taken back and as I'm in the or I see my baby come out lifeless. They do everything they can and manage to resuscitate her. In the meantime my wife is doing poorly and they are scrambling to control her bleeding. I follow the baby out knowing there's really nothing I can do. Baby gets life flighted to another hospital. But before we go I see my wife stable and headed to the IQ. Both my wife and baby are critical but alive. Today they are both thriving and my baby is 16 months and just a tornado of energy. I don't know that they would be alive if not for that dream and it causing me to freak out and demand a change in plan. Abxit said. Super minor compared to many in this thread. Night before Thanksgiving three years ago I was across the country at my parents driving back to theirs with my now wife from a friend's house. As we draw near, there is some type of bundle in the middle of the road. I stopped and pulled off to move it, and it turned out to be a barred owl that got clipped by a car. Long story short I spent the rest of that night getting the owl into a puppy cage, gave it some food and water, and the next day dropped it off at a wildlife rescue center. I got home the next week, all the way across the country, New Jersey to Oregon. I stepped outside and there was a barred owl sitting on my fence watching me. It was gone by the time I got back. But now I know I'm straight with all owls. Timalian said. I have an idea of what may have happened, but I cannot definitively say how this happened. My father died in 2000 in my parents' house. I was over one night pretty late after my mother had gone to sleep. I swear I could feel my father's presence, as I was right in the spot where he had died. They believe he had a heart attack while laying on the couch, tried to get off the couch to call for help but fell on the floor and died, though no one else was home when it happened. I was on the couch when this happened. Anyway, I thought to myself, this is stupid. People don't leave essences behind, I'm not feeling anything. So, I say out loud, if this is really you, dad, knock a box of cereal off the shelf onto the floor. I wanted to pick something I didn't think could happen by accident. I went into the kitchen and watched the shelf with the cereal on it for a few minutes and nothing happened. Since it was almost midnight, I decided to sleep in my old bedroom. I woke up the next morning and went downstairs and a box of cereal was laying on the floor. I say to my mother, did you knock that cereal onto the floor? She said no, it was like that when she woke up. Timalian said. So, what the fuck, man? However, my mother had a cat. I'm guessing the cat did it, but I don't know for sure. If she'd gotten on the shelf, everything would have been knocked around and messy from her. Everything was else was in its normal position, just the box of cereal was on the floor. I mean, regardless, it has to have been the cat, right? Edit. My mother also told me, months before this happened, that she felt my father get in bed with her one night after he died. She said, go away, Greg. You're dead. You don't need to go to bed anymore. 
and she says she felt him get out of the bed after that. Weird. My mother despised my father by the end of his life though they remained married, it's not surprising she told him to GTFO. Fu said. This didn't happen to me, but a very nice old man and his wife used to live a few streets over from us. Well she got very sick and his son flew in to help watch and care for her. A few weeks later she moved to hospice and later died. The night she died her husband and son drive home and they were talking about what to do for the funeral and the husband asked, do you think she'd want, some person, to attend and they both said they heard a dead mom wife in the back seat say no thank you. Lakoffs and Sheen said, the night my friend took his own life I had a sudden urge to call him. I'm in Canada and he was in Atlanta at the time. I didn't call because I was out partying with friends and got the news the next day when I woke up. I feel like I missed the chance to save a friend but my dad says it was him letting me know he was gone but was going to be okay. I'm sorry I didn't reach out bud. I regret it all the time. Blicka I said. When I was a kid, about 10-12ish, I was carrying a load of laundry upstairs home alone while mom was out doing errands. We have this weird carpet runner over our hardwood stairs that's only really attached at the top of the flight but otherwise not fitted or secured to each individual stair, so naturally I step on an air bubble of carpet with my vision obscured by the laundry and fall backwards while bear hugging a bunch of blankets. I specifically remember thinking welp, guess I'm about to die while almost airborne with just my big toe left on the carpet when I felt two hands, one on either side of my shoulder blades. Give me a firm shove that launched me back up on the step and diagonally against the stair rail. I assumed mom somehow silently came back early without announcing herself and turned around to thank her while still clinging to the railing, but no one was there. I scurried upstairs to put my things down while calling her name and walked the house afterwards to check if any doors were unlocked or if her car was there. I finally resorted to calling her cell where she told me she was hitting up a few more stores. It still feels like there's a presence on that stairwell like someone's watching but in a protective way rather than sinisterly. E, thanks for all the awards. I'll have to holler to the stairway ghost and let it know the internet loves it. Wonder Edge said. Ah, we had a stair ghost too. When my mom was heavily pregnant, she used to sit in front of the fire in the den with the dogs at her feet. One night, both dogs jerked awake and proceeded to watch someone climb the spiral staircase but nobody was there. She's pretty sure it was her mum, checking that her bedroom, twins, yay, was ready for us coming, because the dogs were calm and she said she just felt this really reassuring presence. Fast forward six-ish years and I woke up one night to find my mum sitting at the end of my bed and basically running a soothing hand up and down my leg. Said to her the next day that it was really nice, or something along those lines, I was young, and she was absolutely terrified because she didn't come into her room. My mum is the spitting image of her mum, so I'm guessing it was my grand soothing me back to sleep. Dune Manta said. Working as night security for a small office at a sanitation plant. Building was a single entrance and you had to check in at the security station to get in or out. A worker shows up and checks and saying he needs to take care of a few things and grab some stuff. So I check in his ID and flip a few lights for him then go back about my business. Fast forward a few hours and my shift is about to end, I still haven't seen the guy come back. So I go patrol the building to find him and literally can't find him anywhere. He's not in any of the areas I turned lights on for him, no other lights are on, and he's not in any other rooms. I stop by security to see if we just missed each other and he's trying to leave, but nobody is there. I do a second patrol and still no signs. At this point I went to check cameras to see where he went. But he's not on a single camera except the one covering the entrance and security station. He turns down a hallway and never shows up on the next camera down said hall. At this point I logged it as an incident, and GTF alright as the relief shift showed up. Next day my boss calls me and says that worker had been on vacation out of state for several days, and wouldn't return for several more. Nobody could offer any explanation to what happened. Suspicious Eyes 3160 said. Not, the first case of a doppelganger that I've heard actually, which makes this even weird. My close friend actually, his sister said that he had asked her a question, poking his head and half his body out his bedroom door, visible from couch, to ask when the grandma was coming back home. They didn't know and told him as much so he went back to his room and closed the door. Well, 
who comes walking back into the house with the grandma helping with groceries. Lumfeo. Ibes two pigs said. My son, now ten, was four and was able to name my grandmother, by name, by a picture of her when she was in her twenties that was in storage that my mom and I were going through. She died before my wife and I even met. He said she was the lady who taught him how to do his silly laugh. Context, his silly laugh as we called it was a laugh that sounded just like my grandmother's. The reason it was so specific and silly was that my grandmother had a brain aneurysm when my mom was in her teens. It paralyzed the left of her body, including vocal cords and lips, and gave her a very distinct and odd-sounding laugh. Bella X Zero said. I had a dream once about my high school best friend who had moved out of state and started a family. I hadn't seen her or spoken to her in at least 10 years and had never met her child, except seeing pictures posts on Facebook and commenting on them. In my dream I was walking down a street at night and out of nowhere her little girl appears next to me and I asked her, where is your mama? Why are you by yourself? I remember her taking me to some bushes near a random house on the street and finding my friend in bad shape, beaten up or something, on the ground and I remember running to the door of the random house screaming for help and to call the police. This is all I can recall from the dream but I think there may have been a little more. The next day, I wake up and think to myself, man that was weird. Maybe I dreamt of her because we had just spoken a little in comments of a Facebook post, I should send her a message. I go on about my day, go to work, get home later that day and sit on my couch and scroll through Facebook. Bam 1000 posts, rest in peace, etc, all of them tagged my friend and her daughter. I thought what in the actual FCK? At that point there was no information as to what had happened, so I thought it must have been a car accident or something. Over the course of the next few weeks to months, more and more information came out and it was not an accident. My friend and her sweet baby had been murdered by some animal, I won't refer to them as a person. This happened about 5 years ago. I still remember the main parts of the dream vividly. I still am a little horrified that I had this dream that night. When it was happening possibly. I haven't been able to tell anyone else about it either because just thinking about it gives me chills. Parashan said. I was out with my parents, and it was late coming back home. At around 2.30 am we were at a traffic signal, a homeless guy comes and knocks on the window of the seat where my mother was sitting. As she rolled down the window to give him money, he said check what is happening at your brother's house he proceeded to take the money and walked away. Probably thinking that he was a bit crazy in the head, we didn't bother and went home. Next morning mom gets a call from her brother's wife. He has had a heart attack. At 2.30 am. Utso99 said. Already posted this a year and a half ago but I'll go again. I have to make a bit of a premise, when I was little the woman that came to clean my house, I'll call her Mary, while my parents were working was also my babysitter, usually after she ended up cleaning she would bring me to her house until my mom would come and pick me up. There during the year I knew her whole family, among these was her husband that I'll call Dave. So Dave was a pretty cool guy, just the average elder you would find in any rural town. He liked to drink wine with his friends at the bar, go hunting and he had a lot of good and interesting stories to tell me when I was a kid, and after all these years spent told her he basically considered me as a grandson. Now back when Covid hit for the first time in my country I had a dream one night where Mary was coming to my house to clean as every other week, but this time in my living room there was a closed black coffin. When I asked her what was in there she looked at me and said in a sad tone, Dave is inside there. Now if that wasn't strange enough I remember waking up later that night and feeling a presence to the side of my bed, and I distinctly remember to have said while still being half asleep, come on Dave let me get back to sleep. Next morning when I woke my parents told me that Mary had called saying that Dave had passed that night due to COVID complication, to this day I still haven't told anyone about it and I am still a bit freaked out from the whole story. Also sorry for format and grammar but I'm on mobile and English isn't my first language. Leondis04 said. When I was going to my family's home I got in a sub going down the road. This was in Bangladesh at the time and after taking the sub the next two hours would be a highway going down a forest. I was sitting shotgun and along the highway there was an old man walking down the highway. He was hitchhiking and the driver decided to pick him up. He insisted on sitting in my seat and obliged as he was an older man. About an hour down the driver car collided with the bus and the shotgun seat was mangled up. 
We all got out and we looked around but we couldn't find the old man that insisted on taking my seat anywhere. Stories like these aren't rare but I didn't believe them. We all know the man sat in my seat and we all saw him. But he was nowhere to be found. Edit. He just vanished. No blood. He was wearing ethnic attire which isn't peculiar around that area. He didn't speak at all, and we didn't ask him anything either. He just said to drop him off at the market ahead which would be in the town my house was in. One thing that was weird was that he spoke in an oldish Bengali. Like an old Bengali that we'd see in poetry from the 1800s. I didn't see it as peculiar cause he seemed like an ascetic. Madam Burner said. My granddad died when I was seven, but, per his own words, I was his absolute favorite, partially because I am the splitting image of his mother, even into adulthood. When I was 21, I was set to give birth to my first son. I was about to get into the elevator to L&D when a man came in saying that he a volunteer and he'd help me and my husband find our way. The elevator was slow, but we spent the time talking about what a blessing children are and how they grow up so fast. Here's the thing, he looked and sounded exactly like my granddad, same stature, same blue-gray eyes, same faint Scottish-Canadian accent, same cockies, check shirt, and sky-blue cardigan. Even spookier is that the nurses said they don't have any older Malay volunteers in that particular building. I don't really believe in ghosts but I am absolutely certain Grandad paid me a visit that night. Cutting Edge Retro said. Not me, but my mother. She tells two stories. One time her doctor changed her blood pressure meds. It caused her to pass out on the kitchen floor. She had a near-death experience that's similar to what a lot of people describe, the tunnel of light. Dead family members coming to see her, incredible feeling of joy, etc. My uncle, her brother, was maybe 10 years older than her. Back in the 60s, he had a boat and used to take it from Florida to the Bahamas. It was a trip he had made many times. One day he left in the boat and vanished. A short time after, she was at work, and her phone rang. It was a woman. Is this Carol? Yes. I just wanted you to know that your brother died an honorable death. Then the woman hung up. Del Jarala 818 said. I live in a city and my brother lives in another city that is around 1000 kilometers away. He visits sometimes but not quite often. On an average of once every two years. On one day around seven years ago I was sleeping on the couch in the living room at my apartment. I woke up suddenly on my brother sitting just beside me and I was shocked surprised started greeting him and asking him about how was he doing and what pleasant surprise it was. Next thing I realized that this was a dream as the doorbell was ringing which woke me. Went to open the door and guess what? It was my brother who came to surprise us. This literally hit me speechless. Don't have any explanation and I think sometimes you don't need to have one. Greeny at once said. I was about 15 and trying to sleep but having an asthma attack. Late in the night I started hearing a rhythmic breathing from the floor next to the bed. It wasn't scary, more comforting. And it wasn't me, because my breathing sounded way more fucked up than that. It helped me calm down and get to sleep, even though I was still sick, I was able to get my hands on an inhaler in the morning. At the time I thought it was a friendly ghost. I later rationalized that maybe I was hearing a family member through the heating ducts. What I realized years later, when I had a dog, was that it had sounded exactly like a big dog sleeping next to the bed. So now I'm 50 slash 50 on whether a ghost dog came to visit me, or my own dog time traveled back about 10 years before she was born to comfort me. Zelau City a young 41 said. Apparently we lived with a benign spirit, in our house for three and a half years. This is my mother's account of what happened because my sister and I didn't see anything at the time. Only my brother, his best friend and my mother saw it. Back when we were living in South Africa we had moved into an apartment which we had bought. The moving in was actually quite eventful because a mother and her son were renting the place before and although they had been notified they decided to stay past the date that was given to them. I'm not really sure about the details to that as I was around 7 or 8. Long story short we moved in and started settling. After putting us to bed my mother decided to stay up and watch TV. My brother was out with his friends. As she's watching whatever show was on at the time she glances to our only plant in the house, which is about a 1.5 meters tall and sees a man roughly the same height as the plant standing under one of its leaves. Noping out of that shit she gets up and flicks the lights on. He's not there. 
Calling it a night she goes to bed. The next day, or maybe two days later, I'm not sure on that detail, at breakfast my brother, who was around 16 at the time, picked up a piece of bread, turned around to the plant and said hey Michael. Want some? Laughing. My mother asks him who Michael is and he says Michael's the guy standing under the plant at night mind you my mother didn't say anything to anyone about Michael to not freak us out. My brother's best friend was also over that morning, we had basically unofficial. Zelau City a young 41 said. Adopted him, and my mother asks him if he sees Michael too and he says yes. She then asks him to describe Michael and he gives a perfect description down to the whites of his eyes. Michael apparently was a black young man around 1.40-50m in height wearing plain black trousers, a white button-down shirt, and a green vest. His skin tone was quite dark with a faint sheen to it. His eyes were also dark and voller and the whites were tinted a bit yellow. He had a permanent smiling expression on his face that didn't reach his eyes. He stayed put where he was, never moving but following you with his eyes. One morning my mom woke up to my dad coming home who had bought this indoor circulating water thing, I really don't know what they're called. He moved the plant exactly opposite where it was, next to the couch and put that water thing there instead. My mother didn't say anything and that night Michael also moved with the plant. Of course after hearing this I asked the next logical question that any sane person would ask. Why the fuck didn't she just throw away the plant? She said it never occurred to her face bomb. So yeah, that is the story of Michael the benign smiling spirit that was a part of our family for some time. Edit, I had drawn the basic layout of our living room but it looked completely fucked up when posted. So I erased it. Oh well. Edit 2, just spoke to my mother, she said Michael's eyes weren't dark but a dark honey color. How I forgot such a creepy detail is beyond me. But there you am it. Queen Omega said. My siblings and I all had the same dream on the same night a year ago. It was exactly one year after my mom died and we all had a dream about her and she was in the same place and was speaking to us. She reassured us that she was okay and she was with her mom and my dead siblings and that her dad is in the bad place. The next day we all realized we had the same dream. We even all independently drew a picture of the place we saw her and wrote down the name of the place it resembled. Most of my siblings took that as an actual message from my mum but my youngest sister and I like to believe that we have all developed some freaky hive mind low level telepathy lol. Cloth diaper addicts said. The only way I can explain this one is wishful thinking. My mom and dad were codependent, and they liked it that way. They didn't want other people, other than the kids. They were completely happy to be just wrapped up in each other. My dad died the day before his birthday in a hospice center. Afterwards, it was like he was still home. His touch lamp beside his recliner would go on by itself. The recliner would rock like someone was getting in it. And sometimes, my mom or my sister would hear my dad saying, Honey, fix me a cold drink. That was exactly how he'd ask my mom to fill up his massive mug with Sprite over ice. My mother died less than a year and a half later. After my mother died, there was never another sign of either of them being there. They've been gone now for close to 14 years now. Bloodstein said. Red luminescent ball flying on the hoary sun. It moved like nothing we'd ever seen. Zipping around at incredible speed that defied the laws of physics. There were about 20 of us watching it, and some of the kids asked me what I thought it was, as I grew up living and breathing aviation with my dad. I had to tell them that since I couldn't identify what it was, that it was essentially a UFO. Had to then explain that it doesn't mean aliens, just that what we saw couldn't be identified by any knowledge I had of aircraft, not then, and not even now. It could have been ball lighting for all I knew at the time, but it was kilometers away above the hurry sun in the dusk sunlight. Successful Resort 447 said. We had a kitten producing cat when I was about 6 or 7 years old. We knew it had kitchen since it was pregnant for a while and then wasn't. We had no idea where the kitchens were, which was an issue. I was curious about it and looked right at the cat, thinking to myself, where are your kittens? But without saying anything, if that makes sense. My imagination immediately went to the location our cat could jump into it from pillars on the side of the porch through some damaged boards right above our porch. I knew they were around. I dashed over there, mounted the stone pillar, and peered through the gap in the boards. The kitchens were right in front of me. I've never experienced another event like it in my entire life. 
0TT3RG0RL said. So I was too young to remember this firsthand and we moved to a new house a month before I turned two years old to give you an idea of how young. But my parents told me that when we lived in our first house I would absolutely not go into my bedroom. I would put my hands and feet across the doorframe and scream bloody murder and no matter how hard my parents tried they could not get me into that room. One time my parents must have managed to actually get me in there, and I was crying my eyes out. My mum asks me what the matter was and apparently I just pointed to the corner and said funny man. Funny man in the corner. My parents let me stay in their room after that apparently. Klijnj said. My mom had a premonition that my brother would not be safe when he was about to go on holiday. They were going to drive to Italy in his GF's car, what I can only describe as a yellow cookie jar with wheels underneath. She kept freaking out for a week, and the day before they left, she bought a second-hand VW Golf, not a big car, but way less tin foil and with a decent cage construction, you know, German Grundlichkeit, and send them on their way. She had to jump through hoops to get it insured in time, but the insurance agent could it tell she was borderline hysterical at that point. Friday afternoon at 16.50, everything was about to close for the weekend, and made sure it happened. They took the car on Saturday morning and went on their way. Telephone rang 10 hours later, they got pancaked in a traffic jam in Switzerland. Car was totaled but they didn't have a scratch. She felt bad for informing insurance next Monday about what happened. Really she wanted to let it slide and take the financial loss. You can ask for too much, you know. But as it wasn't my brother's fault, it got dealt with anyway. Needless to say she still is a big fan of EW. MR Plow King said. A merchant in Baghdad sends his servant to the marketplace for provisions. Soon afterwards, the servant comes home white and trembling and tells him that in the marketplace, he was jostled by a woman, whom he recognized as death who made a threatening gesture. Borrowing the merchant's horse, he flees at great speed to Samara, a distance of about 75 miles, 125 km, where he believes death will not find him. The merchant then goes to the marketplace and finds death, and asks why she made the threatening gesture to his servant. She replies, that was not a threatening gesture, it was only a start of surprise. I was astonished to see him in Baghdad, for I have an appointment with him tonight in Samara. Sonatrev said. When I bought my house there was an above ground pool that hadn't had a liner or pump for 15 plus years. I put in a new liner and pump. I filled the pool and got it all working one evening. I was super happy to have done it myself and wasn't worried at all. That night I had a dream about my grandma who had died about two weeks prior. She woke me up from the dream at about 4 a.m. and all I knew was I had to go look at the pool. I went outside and found I hadn't tightened the hose clamp on the return hose and pool water was shooting from the hose. From the amount of water around I could tell this happened no more than 5 minutes earlier. I put the hose back on, tightened the clamps and I lost almost no water from the pool. I'm not superstitious and don't really believe in ghosts. But. I don't have any explanation for it other than that.